Hey, it's Prerak and today we are installing 12K PLA which will also enable auto park in my 2010 Lora. This is everything we need to add 12K PLA in my car. Two ultrasonic sensors which get mounted to the front bumper at the very corner of it. Six PDC sensors, four of which will be mounted at the front and two at the very corners at the rear bumper. Two new buttons, one to activate auto park and the other to manually activate the OPS display if needed. A buzzer for the front parking sensors, two new bi-directional ABS sensors which will go in the rear wheels and the new front bumper wiring harness. Currently the car has 4K OPS, which means it has 4 sensors at the rear with a display for them. But our goal is to have 360 view of the sensors. So let's begin the installation. I'm going to begin the installation by first wiring everything. I will make the harness to join the module to the button and the buzzer. So I have made this entire wiring harness following this schematic right here, which I found from various sources online. This is the entire harness right here. These few strands of wires are going to get connected to this connector which will be installed in the front bumper for the front sensors. This is the new 12 pin connector. All of the wires from here are basically leading to here. And then there are these two button wires. And then there's the wire for the buzzer. Right here for the front buzzer. This is where the stock 4K OPS module is located. In the luggage compartment on the left hand side. To access it, we need to remove this hook with two T20 Torx screws. There is another one near the tail light which was never installed in my car. Once undone, we can pull the lining to find the module resting in its place. All the wiring needs to originate from here. Now it's time to lay down the wiring harness. I start to tear apart the left door sill trims to do that. It is funny to think that this car does not spend one full week being put together. I always keep adding things to it and keep opening it up. Now with the glove box out as well, we can access the grommet behind it to send the wires for the front sensors through it. But on the outside, we still need to remove the battery and the intake which are in our way. Then we are ready to make the wires go through it. It was a little tedious, but it's done. Now we just need to connect the connectors to the wire. I just need to correctly correspond the wires on the 12 pin connector based on color or number. So I just check them with my multimeter and start the work. Once connected, I solder all of them and shrink the heat shrink I added previously. And just like that, we have a nice solid joint which is ready to be taped. Now to just pull this harness to the module and taking apart a bit more of the interior to lay down the wiring for the buttons and the front buzzer. I route the newly made harness along the factory harness and then make the necessary connections of ground and illumination for the buttons along with the previously added set button without tampering the original factory harness just the added adapter harness. I then quickly connected to check if I made the correct connections and I sure did. And this is what the buttons finally look like. Now to place the buzzer in its designated spot, we need to remove the gauge cluster. It is pretty cool how the cluster is locked in. You need to push two hard plastic cards at 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock position of the cluster to release the locks. 
but once removed the wire for the front buzzer can be pulled up the locks for it can be installed as well and finally the buzzer itself with that most of the wiring is complete it is time to install the eight new sensors so let's remove the bumpers now in order to remove the rear bumper i need to lift up the car to access one screw behind the fender lining it is not skoda's fault i have lowered this car and put bigger wheels on it so now i cannot access it without lifting it i will use this to my advantage however and install the new abs sensors while i'm at it then i continue to lower the rear bumper and then move on to the front which is a lot easier I start by drilling pilot holes. I take estimation of the location of sensors with my old stock bumper, which has templates at the rear for where the sensors need to go. After the pilot hole, I make an 8 mm hole so the sensor cutting tool can fit. Then with the sensor cutting tool, I make the final hole for the sensor. to paste the sensors i used my solder iron to melt the bracket and the bumper together something similar is done at the factory as well but fevicoic or any strong glue can be used it's just plastic and finally for the ultrasonic sensors i estimate their location based on where they are installed in a passat and drill holes for them my pla sensor cutting tool had not arrived by this point so i used a die grinder to make the hole of the correct size making small adjustments each time and finally we had this result pretty happy with it before putting the bumper back up i route the new front harness along the factory harness in the engine bay to make it look neat now to repeat the drilling part at the rear we need to install two corner sensors these are normal pdc sensors if i had known earlier i would not have made a bigger hole for the bracket I would have just made the smaller hole and used the normal PDC sensor but I didn't know at that time So the new sensors were fit I also had to add two additional wiring for these sensors but I won't bore you with it At the module I add all the loose pins to the correct slot of the correct connectors and finish the wiring finally and connect the module and I also connect the bumper harnesses as well to test everything out So I have just connected everything yet and not coded it there are going to be millions of faults already there's abs fault because I have replaced the abs sensor but let's just see if it displays 12 sensors when I press this button or not Okay all right some coding later we have this this is just display of uh, eight sensors so far once we start moving the rest of the grid will start to appear but the bumpers are open right now with that success i start to put the car back together and now with everything wired coded and put back together let's see how it all functions now this is how the ops system works when i press this pdc button it or ops button it displays this entire grid of sensors as you can see not only does it display the front and the rear but also the sides so if you notice there is a car over there if you go if i go near it from the side it will display accordingly in the grid and as i move past it it will move past in the grids accordingly this is how the side sensors work if i park between these two cars it will tell me how far away i am from either just like that and even the front and rear now let me demonstrate its auto park function the auto park function has two features it can either perpendicular park into a parking space like this between two pillars or two cars or wherever you wish to perpendicularly park your vehicle and it also has parallel park uh, feature as well so let me demonstrate the perpendicular part first 
Now if I press this auto park button once, you will see it displays <coughs> a parallel configuration. If I click it again, it switches to perpendicular park configuration. And I wish to park on the right hand side. So if I, if I give a right hand side indicator, the configuration will switch to right hand side and it will search for spots on this side. So if I just move across these pillars, it should recognize that there is a parking space available. There is a progress bar on the right hand side which shows me how long I need to reverse for. When that progress bar ends, it will uh, shine once and ask me to put it in drive. The steering has completely taken over itself. I'm not doing anything here. And if it recognizes that the car is even a little bit crooked, it is a bit of a perfectionist and goes out of the parking entirely and then straightens the car up properly. So it's actually perpendicular within the pillars. Just like that. So the car parked perpendicularly perfectly. Now let's test its parallel parking feature. You can see we have a space right here between these two cars and it is pretty much as long as the car is. So we are testing its capabilities a bit here and I'm pretty confident that it will park here. So let's get inside of the car and see if it can do this. But this is not actually it. Not only can it park, but it can also get you out of this perpendicularly parked position. Let's take a look at that. Now, if you are perpendicularly parked like this and it is a little bit packed and you cannot get out of the situation, what you can do is click this button again and I wish to get out of the left hand side. So I'll select the left indicator, put it into reverse and go back. Now what the car will do is put me in a position where I can easily just drive out of this place. It's giving me commands from right there. And once it thinks that you can now just uh, go out, it will say please take over the steering and continue journey. Now I'm in a position where I can just easily drive out of that parallelly parked position. Now without even having to touch the steering wheel, I am out of that packed position and in an angle where I can just drive out. Now I know that this auto park feature and getting out of a parked position is a bit of a gimmick and a lot of people will say that it is just a useless feature who and no one is ever going to use this. Well, that is right. 
it is a gimmick but it's so cool that a car which is 15 years old can do this i can install all of all of these parts and have it do all of this that is that is insane right and the thing is i really wanted the 360 ops because it makes the screen so full so filled now the 8k screen looks a bit weird to me i need that 360 ops at all times not that i go near a lot of fillers or i stand in traffic that i'm just scared that people will hit my car but i just wanted this feature so i installed it i enjoy doing these things and that is why i did it so hold your comments about the, this being a gimmick i understand that now it's functioning as cool and all but let me demonstrate how this sensor actually knows what's happening behind it around it at the 4 meters of length let me tell you how it all works how it works is like this the sensors at the very corner detect if there is anything nearby like that car so once the corner sensor detects that there is something at the very corner rest of the function will work with the rear wheels the rear wheels have new abs sensors in them and they will detect the motion of the car if the car is going straight they will keep this line straight if they detect that i'm moving closer to the to the obstacle it will start to alert more and more just like that and if you look in the mirror right here the car is really close to me right near the driver door and that is accurately where it is showing that it's really near now it detects that based on the rear wheels if i move away from it it will make the obstacle go further apart so it's not that this sensor has the vision of the entire side it's just that it detects that there was something over here and based on the motion of the car it detects where it must be and it is very accurate with it so that is all i wanted to share on the topic of adding 12k pla and auto park in my 2010 lora now this thing is not possible on all loras you require to have a maxidor cluster and an updated can gateway module and obviously all the rest of the parts but it is crazy to think that these things are possible and people don't really explore them they just use them as is and scrap them so i wish to explore a lot more with this in the next video possibly you will see keyless entry in this car so stay tuned for that thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one